What's going on everybody? I really appreciate you guys coming back to check out my channel and to check out my work. Uh, it means a lot that you guys are sticking around. Uh, so in today's video, we're gonna go ahead and talk about how I would edit a photo on my iPad Pro. Uh, if I'm not at home using my desktop, I am using my iPad Pro to edit all my work. It's such a much better way to edit when I'm on the go. Uh, I was using a MacBook Pro for a while, but I just didn't like the screen size. I love how the iPad uses the whole screen to show you the image so you can see all the detail in your photo. So I just prefer using the iPad over any other device when I'm on the go. So if you guys are ready, let's go ahead and dive into the video. All right, so before we start editing this photo, I just wanted to quickly run down the settings that I used to take this shot. So I shot this on my Nikon Z6 II at a shutter speed of 1 1 60th of a second at aperture 3.5. And I shot it at 3.5 just because I wanted to make sure that I could get the entire car in focus with still blurring out the background. And at ISO 110. Uh, I use my Tamron 35mm 1.8 to shoot this shot, and that's this lens right over here. So let's go ahead and start editing. I'm going to click on my preset tab and scroll down uh, to my tone curve presets. Tone curve 2 is what I'm going to start with. And the reason why that I have tone curve presets in my Lightroom mobile app is because on the mobile app they don't give you the option to copy and paste your RGB channels to match each one. So if you wanted to match your red, green, and blue channels, you would have to go in and manually do it. So creating a tone curve preset speeds up that time and make things a lot easier. So we're gonna go ahead and start with the first tone curve and I'm gonna bring down the shadows quite a bit, bring down the mid tones, drop the whites a little bit, Drop the highlights quite a bit. Drop that down a little bit more. That looks pretty good right about there. And I'm gonna bring the exposure up just a little bit to see what we're working with here. And since we have so much contrast from the tone curves, I'm gonna bring the contrast down uh, quite a bit. So that's looking pretty good. We're gonna go ahead over to the highlights and bring the highlights down. It looks like it's just affecting the sky. So we wanna bring back some detail in the sky. Uh, shadows will come up a bit because we wanna see the detail in the car. And the whites, we're gonna bring up a little bit to about a plus 10. Same thing with the blacks. We'll bring the blacks up to match the whites at around a plus 14. That looks pretty good. Now I will say the one issue I do have with the Lightroom mobile app is that you cannot click on the number and change it manually. You have to use the pen or use your finger and just rely on the sliders to get the number right. So it can take a little bit of time and finesse to get that right number. So if you want a 15, you might get a 16 or 17, or you might get a 14. So you kind of have to just dial in and get used to the way that the sliders work. So that basic panel is looking pretty good. So we're gonna hop into the color panel now. Uh, I'm not gonna do anything with the temperature or tint, but I will bring up the vibrance uh, to about a plus 10 and the saturation down a plus or a negative six. So jumping into the color mix, we're gonna start with the reds. And it looks like the red is just, uh, uh, just affecting that toe strap on the front bumper of the car. So we're gonna, gonna go ahead and drop the luminance on that. And then we're gonna bring up the saturation to get some more color out of that toe strap because it was looking a little bit faded. Uh, it looks like the oranges are affecting the train and the grass in the background. So I wanna go ahead and bring down the luminance on that just to draw more attention to the subject. With the yellows, we're gonna drop the yellows as well because again, it's affecting the uh, grass in the background. So the luminance is gonna come down along with the saturation and we're gonna push those yellows over to the orange side of the hue slider. With the greens, I like to desaturate my greens quite a bit. So we're gonna go ahead and bring the luminance down quite a bit. Saturation is gonna come down quite a bit as well and the hue is gonna get pushed over to that yellow side. Doesn't look like much is happening with the cyan, so I think we're gonna leave it as is. Uh, the blues, it looks like the blues are playing a role and the highlights in the sky as well as the highlights in the car. So we're gonna drop the luminance down and then we're gonna go ahead and drop the saturation down just a little bit, negative 11. Not much in the purple channel and not much in the magenta. It looks like maybe on that toe strap, a little magenta, so we'll drop that down a little bit. 
and then we're gonna bring the hue a little bit to the purple side on the blues. So that's the before and the after, looking pretty good. Now in the color grading, I like to go about 120, I'm sorry, 220 on my colors for my shadows. So you get that nice uh, deep blues. And then we're gonna bring the saturation down to something around 11 or maybe even 12. That looks pretty good. Now over to the highlights. I'm gonna bring those highlights to the oranges. Then we're gonna drop the saturation down quite a bit as well on those again. Something to about, uh, about eight looks pretty good. And then with blending and balance, I like to move my blending almost to 100%. So we'll just go about 95, I think uh, 95, yeah, looks pretty good. And then the balance, I like to push the balance all the way to the shadows to bring more shadow color out. So we're gonna go to somewhere around, uh, let's 77, negative 77 looks pretty good. And it's looking pretty cool now overall. So we're gonna go back to the temp and we're gonna push the temp over to the warmer colors. So it was at 5,800 and we're gonna bring it over to about 6,400. And the tint looks pretty good. We're gonna leave the tint how it is. And then the effects. I like to take a little bit of texture and a little bit of clarity out of my images just because there's a lot of digital sharpness going on with these cameras nowadays. So I like to just soften everything up just a little bit. And we're gonna put a little bit of texture back into the car when we do masking. And a little vignette just to uh, draw your eye closer to the subject. Nothing with grain, nothing with highlights. Uh, optics, we'll go ahead and remove the chromatic aberrations. And I think that's looking pretty good. I like the way that looks. So we're gonna go ahead and hop in to the masking channels. We're gonna go ahead and select our subject. And this is probably one of my favorite things that Lightroom has done uh, with the AI uh, subject. So we're gonna go ahead and bring a little bit of exposure back into the car. And we're gonna drop the highlights a little bit to about uh, negative 30 looks pretty good. Bring back some contrast to give it a little more of a punch. Shadows are gonna come up just a hair to about plus five and we're not gonna touch the whites or the blacks. Colors, no. Effects, we're gonna go ahead and put some texture, like I said, back into the car to make it pop just a little bit. So a plus eight on texture and then a plus four on the clarity. Nothing on detail, nothing on optics. So that looks pretty good for the subject. And I like to go ahead and brush in the headlights I treat the headlights of a car as if I would a human eye, so I like to give a little bit of detail back into the headlights just to make them stand out. A little bit of uh, contra oh, I'm sorry, a little bit of clarity will uh, make those headlights pop. A little linear gradient in the foreground just and darkens up the foreground to draw your eye closer into the subject. And we'll put a radial gradient over the subject as well and bring up the exposure just to bring a little more light over the overall subject. So I think that looks pretty good. Maybe we'll do a, a sky, sky selection and just bring down the sky so we can get some detail back into that sky. Let's drop the highlights, negative 11, and then we'll boost the clarity to about a 17, so that looks pretty good. And final touches, you can go ahead and use the healing brush tool and kind of just fix the foreground, kind of clean it up a little bit. You can do this in Photoshop, obviously, but uh, Lightroom does a pretty good job of, of, of a healing brush if you just want to do a quick little fix. So this is the before, and that's the after. So, so again, Really easy edit to do on your iPad. I love using the iPad uh, when I'm on the go as opposed to my laptop just because you get the full size image 
uh, of your image on the screen as opposed to the panels that you would have on the sides of the desktop Lightroom. Um, so it just makes working on photos much easier to deal with, uh, which is why I prefer editing on the iPad and exporting. We're just gonna go ahead and click on export as. Uh, we're gonna keep it as a JPEG, the largest available dimensions. Uh, image quality is gonna stay at 100%. And then we're gonna hit the check mark and it's gonna share the photo. And when it exports, we're just going to save it to our camera roll. So now the image will be saved to our camera roll and then it'll be ready to post on Instagram. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one.